Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's uh, what an honor to be in Iowa. I think, uh, Jeff, I was sitting in my chair and thinking about what if this was South Carolina and we had a chairman like Jeff Kaufman? <laughs> We've got a good one, don't get me wrong, but it, it would sound something like this in the Deep South. I believe all things I said, all things are possible. Can you not understand what I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you. If you just go red to the roots, we'll be number one. Number one, number one, number one, number one. And let me just point why. Why? Why is it so? Why is it so? Why is it so? <laughs> well, it's because coming from the great state of Iowa, we have a governor that has brought the unemployment rate from up yonder somewhere all the way down to 2.7%. This here for our governor! Because I'm not Jeff, I can't do the moonwalk, so I'm not going to try that. He would then say that we have 50,000 jobs that we cannot fill because our governor's done such a good job of putting everybody back at work. What do we do now? And his answer would be, elect more Republicans. Because the more Republicans we have, the more business owners we have, the more success we have, the more profit we have, the more training we have, the more we'll have a 1.9% unemployment rate. Oh, Jesus. I don't know how he does it. But you have a lot to be excited about. Because I have the privilege of flying to Washington, D.C. with three members of your delegation. And your delegation hits far above their weight. We have, I remember the commercials coming out of the state about having a farmer as the head of judiciary. One of the world's greatest farmers is now the chairman of the United States Judiciary Committee. And he, he is laying the law down. He's doing a fantastic job. Y'all call him Senator, do y'all say y'all? <laughs> y'all call him Senator Grassley. I call him the general. Because literally, when I came into the United States Senate, there were two senators that took me under their wings. One was from Wyoming the great Dr. John Barrasso, and the other one was Senator Grassley, who wanted me to succeed. And he said very early on, Tim, I actually said, Tim, I thought he was mad at me for a minute, because he was like frustrated. He's, Tim, this is the first day of your election. And every single day I saw him, he would say, Tim, this is the first day of your election. He understood what I did not understand as a simple Congress member representing one-seventh of my state. He was suggesting that if you're at home on the weekends, comfortable in your backyard, this will be the last day you were a congressman in the United States Senate or the United States Senate. And so I, I, I received this teaching from the great Senator General Grassley. And it literally transformed the way I saw my responsibility, not, not, not simply as a senator, but as a servant. Because doing a 99 tour like the senator, 99 county tour like the senator, and the senator says a lot about how much who he is is ingrained in who y'all are. God bless you for sending Senator Chuck Grassley to the United States Senate. We as a nation thank you for that. Now, 
if I take just as long as I did on Jeff and, Do uh, and Senator Grassley, I will have no time left for my speech on Joni and David. So I'm going to. They say that giving a senator a microphone is like experiencing eternity. I apologize. I'm going to try to slow it up. Senator Joni Ernst, Colonel Ernst, thank you for your service to the country as a member of our armed forces. God bless you, and thank you all. All who have served our nation, or those of you who are serving our nation, thank you for paying the price. Thank you for making the commitment to being the glue that makes America great. We are blessed by those who serve in uniform. And I am so thankful that one of our subcommittee chairmen on the Senate Armed Services Committee, where I am serving now for the first time this year, is none other than your own Senator Joni Ernst, who is amazing. Her character shines through. Her commitment and dedication to the state shines through. You are blessed with her leadership. And David Young, the former chief of staff for seven years of the Senator General, Chief Executive Grassley, God bless you. I have not gotten to know you as well as I have the two senators, but my chief of staff attended a Bible study with you for many years, and she tells me that you are a class act, and spending today with you visiting different opportunity zones, I will say that she was not wronged by an iota. Thank you for your service without a question. Yeah. I come from a state where hurricanes happen every year or two, and we're always preparing for something that we have five, six, seven, eight, nine days see. We can see it coming. To arrive last night and see the videos of the tornadoes, and to think about the necessary response of Governor Reynolds and so many of our emergency workers responding to the catastrophe with no warning gave me a different appreciation for what it means to, to respond to a natural disaster. My prayers are with you and your state. Thank God there was no loss of life. The rebuilding for many of those folks who were bewildered, puzzled, and perplexed by what they could no longer see as their home or their business I am thankful that your leadership will lead them in a positive, constructive direction. And what we can do from the federal level, from an emergency response standpoint, count us in without doubt. My final thought, and I only have a five-minute speech because I get to sit up here for 30 minutes, so I just shortened my speech to 15 to five minutes, is to those folks who are waiting the tables, making sure that we get our food, our coffee, and our time, let's please give them a round of applause for the way that they have taken care of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. As a kid who was raised by a single mama, I believe that sometimes you have to give them the roses while they're living and stop and say thank you for the wonderful service that we have had. I'm going to spend just a few minutes on my personal story, and then I'll sit in a chair and have 30 minutes to talk about all the issues and the challenges that we face as a nation, and I look forward to that part of the conversation as well. Being a kid raised in the South, Single parent household, my parents got divorced when I was about seven years old, and that is a very important point in my life for me. Much of what I do as a public servant goes back to trying to find a way to create hope and opportunities for a seven-year-old kid who was hopeless, drifting in the wrong direction, and who could see no real reasons to invest in this country at seven years old. And from 7 until 14, I drifted. Now, how many of y'all know all drifting leads in the wrong direction? I'm not sure if you say amen here, huh? But we do back at home. Can I get an amen? It just make me feel it. Thank the 17 of y'all who said amen. Anyways, all drifting leads in the wrong direction. So at 14, I find myself as a freshman in high school, flunking out of high school. The governor suggested that I did not do well in high school, and she was not fibbing. I failed my freshman year. I failed world geography. I am still directionless to this day. 
I also, I may be the only senator to fail civics, <laughs> the study of politics. I will say, though, after five years in the United States Senate, I am not the only senator <laughs> who has failed civics. We have a whole lot of folks on the left. Uh, I can't tell you what they did on the report card. I can just tell you that they need some help on the left. I also failed Spanish and English. Now, when you fail Spanish and English, no one calls you bilingual. Nobody. They just call you by ignorant because you can't speak in any language. That's where I found my unhappy self. I had two major blessings, though. One was a God-fearing mother who believed that it was her responsibility to pray for me no matter what she saw. She, she defined faith as the invisible thing, according to Hebrews 11.1. 1. And I had a mentor who was a conservative Republican business owner who ran the local Chick-fil-A, a guy named John Moniz who really transformed the way I saw the world. Now, when I was failing my freshman year in high school, my mother would come home after a 16-hour shift as a nurse's aide, flipping patients and changing bedpans was her job for 16 hours a day. She would come home and she would say, Timmy, you can do better. I want you to shoot for the moon, and if you miss, you're at least among the stars. You may have heard that before. And she said it to me over and over and over again. She'd come in there frustrated, and she'd put on her happy face, and she would love me. And at the end of the year, when she realized that this strategy had not worked, she introduced a new form of motivation. She walked me outside and introduced me to something called the psychology of a switch. <laughs> now, maybe in the Midwest you're unfamiliar with a switch. But in the Deep South, a switch is a southern apparatus of encouragement. <laughs> it is carefully applied from your belt to your ankles, and I was thoroughly encouraged. But my mentor comes along my next year. I, I go to summer school. I realize that academics is more important than athletics, and I get my act together. I realize that there's more in my cranial cavity than in the rest of my body combined. And so I become a student and not an athlete, and I graduate on time and get a football scholarship to college. But during those four years, John Moniz, the Chick-fil-A operator, teaches me the most valuable lessons about transforming your life, and it started with looking in the mirror and blaming yourself. If you don't like where you are, if you don't like who you are, if you don't like what you are, don't blame your father because he's not around. Don't blame your mother because she's working all day long. Blame yourself. Take responsibility. Because if you do, if you could find the problem inside, you've just found the promise. If you see the obstacles within yourself, you've just found the opportunity. And this magical lesson from a small business owner starts transforming, I see the way the world works. I didn't know that he was a Republican. He never talked to me about conservative values or Republicanism. He always talked to me about character, about opportunity, about responsibility. One of the reasons why I celebrate the Trump economy is because my mentor taught me that a good economy makes all things possible. Now, not all things in life, but all things from a monetary perspective, from a social glue perspective, comes in part from having a 2.7% unemployment rate with 50,000 folks looking for work. Or as a nation, it comes from this concept that we have a 4% unemployment rate with 213,000 new employees added to the workforce just last month, 900,000 long-term unemployed folks now coming back to work because when the employment rate is at 4%, and as we discussed earlier, the pressure on the wages at 4% unemployment pushes the wages up. The, the long-term unemployed, they turn from their casual perspective on work and are motivated by a little currency. And as this occurs, it puts an upward pressure on the, on the wages, which is one of the reasons why we've had the Fastest wage growth since 2009, about 2.7 to 2.9 percent. 
and we've been able to keep core inflation around 2%. You see, the magic mix, the secret sauce that President Trump has provided, the injection of opportunity and optimism, a 45-year high, according to the National Federation of Independent Businesses, folks are excited about this current economy, and it's been brought to you by a president who is unabashedly putting America first. I think that's a good thing. We are, we are in the midst of the longest, the third longest economic expansion since 1854. Not 1954 but 1854 because under this administration, under President Donald J. Trump, we have focused our attention on making sure that our folks go back to work. And so with a, an amazing tax relief package, complemented by a responsible, as opposed to irresponsible, level of regulations, people are able to have access to capital, build businesses, borrow money for their first homes, and inject energy into this nation in a way that no one else in the world has seen. This is done under strong leadership from the White House. And the good news is the best is yet to come. Our tax cuts delivered a 73% drop in the tax, federal tax burden of a single mother, a 65% drop in the tax burden of the average dual parent household. We saw a doubling of the child tax credit and a doubling of the standard deduction. We saw a 20% cut for small businesses. Now, if we can just and I'm going to end on this note. If we can just, just, if we can just, just get our trade right. Can I get an amen? Okay. Just, I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident we're going to get it right. I'm, I'm confident. Dear Lord, if we just get our trade right, Agriculture is the number one industry in the state, and in my state it's number three. If we just get our ag and our, and our trade and our, and our tariffs right, <laughs> Katie, bar the door. America is going to have its longest economic expansion in all of the history of, I'm trying to be Jeff. Of the country! God bless you. Thank you for having me.